Hello friends, Jenkins Dota here, bringing you another Dota 2 video on behalf of Pugna.com and this is going to be part of the offlaning with Broodmother in 7.07 .07 video series. And in this video I'm going to be covering uh, playing Broodmother in the offlane in the laning phase. So basically what I'm going to be doing is just checking out a replay of a, of a game that I played recently in Ranked where I played Broodmother and I intentionally picked it against something that was a very difficult lane being a Jakiro Sven Pudge lane, three heroes with AoE, heroes who are very good at killing, and then Sven who's very, very good at laning against Broodmother. Uh, and you can see that the very first thing that I do is I walk into the lane, I place a web uh, right in front of the tower in the exact same location that I talked about in the uh, web placement video, and then I place another uh, another web right above that, kind of giving me a lot of tree space on the left and right to play with, and then also uh, kind of a cliff on the left uh, by the river to play with. And then I just kind of go over and walk over to the right, place a ward down because I know that they're not going to see me because... Um, well, I'm in the trees, of course, and uh, they can't TP and stuff. So I'm just going over here to kind of check to see if I can walk uh, walk up the cliff to see if I would maybe need to adjust my web at all. Uh, I put my what I'm going to be buying in the early phases of the game into my quick buy just because I'm going to, you know, want to buy those items ASAP if I'm going to get ganked or something like that and I'm about to die. It's much, much easier to click those when they're right there. And for some reason, my mid laner didn't grab this bounty rune, which was just great for me. I was pretty happy about that. So I just, you know, pick it up. I'm laughing my way to the bank, and uh, the very first thing that you want to do is you want to block, try to let the range creep go first, just because a lot of the time people do put, push against Broodmother, just because she's such a pain to deal with, people just kind of right click the creep wave uh, instinctively. Uh, and if you let the range creep go first, then you pull the creep wave back into the tower and you have webs all the way back here, so that's, that's really nice. So it kind of just makes that kind of effect happen faster. So what I do at the start of the laning phase is I just position myself kind of in the trees and I pull the creep wave around a little bit. So I pull the creep wave to the edge so maybe I can get out and last hit it. But I'm just kind of getting a, getting a gauge of, of where the supports are at in the lane if they're, gonna, if they're gonna kill me. So you can see that I'm not playing really, really aggressively in the lane. I just wanna kind of see what these guys want to do in this lane. And I've noticed that they're just basically running at me like madmen, which is good for me. And I kind of decide that, okay, if I can just get some last hits in this lane and get up to those spiders, not only am I, going, am I going to crush them, but if I can just get some last hits in this lane, then they're going to not be ganking any other lanes. They're going to lose all the other lanes because we have people who are doing things in those lanes and they don't. Uh, so I put a web up here in the kind of the left area because there's so much tree space over here to move in. And I just right click the Jakiro. There's nothing that they can do. Even if they stun me, Pudge is so far away that uh, I'm just going to run into the trees and uh, so that you can see that he stuns me, he uses the, the, the fire on me, and I just run into the trees. And even if they came and looked for me, I would just run even deeper into the trees. So you can see that my web placement in this in this uh, replay is actually differing from what I suggested in the web placement video. And that's because this is not an ideal situation for me. You'd, you'd rather have your web placement be very, very greedy and just be in the lane and get as many last hits as, as you can. But... That's not always possible. So I put it up in the trees, so that way they would waste their they would waste their spells on me. They would, they would waste their time uh, trying to go on me. And as you can see, they're kind of going for me here, dusting me here, which is really weird. But I run over the cliff, and there's nothing that they can do about it. This web is great for them trying to go on you, but the web kind of up up um, more so by their tower. Uh, so the second web that I put here, it's not great for if they actually try and go on you. So that's why I put that second web to the left. But since my the creep wave is pushing into my tower, I destroyed that web that I put there only temporarily. And it was worth it because I, I got them to waste some of their spells on me and because I got some last hits and I, and I got some spiders doing that. But now, now since I actually have, uh, I have a lot more space to, to work with in this lane, I am just sitting on the cliff and I'm spawning spiders and I have the, I have the webs in the middle of the lane. They're greedier webs. So since I'm laning against a Sven, and I think if you're laning against a lot of AoE you can, and, and heroes who are trying to kill you, you can kind of go for the boots first instead of soul ring, and then you go for level two in the webs, because you can see that I'm just sitting here last sitting under the tower, right? What's the point in, in getting uh, any spiders and, and using my, my, my one clarity to get spiders here when I can just go for a second point of web, get a lot more regen, have a lot more space to move around in the lane, uh, be a lot harder to kill because I basically have almost 500 movement speed. And then I'm getting last hits anyway, so I don't really need the spiders for that. So I'm gonna wait until a little bit later to get those spiders. And there's a lot of situations where you do that. And since I have the extra points and webs, I can now juke around this Jakiro. He's struggling to put his fire blast on, or his, his, uh, his 
breathe fire on me, and that goes for a lot of supports. You can just kind of trade with them really, really well if you go for a second point of webs. However, if you're if you're having you know an ideal laning situation, if you're completely crushing the lane, which a lot of the time does happen on Broodmother, you can go for that second point of spiders, and you can start building up that spider army. But there's not really a point if you don't have a soul ring. So I'm just kind of getting these last hits as as you know as much as I can to uh, to build me into the uh, into the soul ring, and you can see that. A very, very big thing that I'm trying to play around with in this game, and I think that you should do this in almost any brood game because people are going to try and kill you. Uh, even against counters, people are going to be trying to, uh, you know, use their AoE abilities on you and, and just... You can see that he's faking his stun on me. So I'm spending a lot of time making sure that I'm, I'm at the very least, close enough to the cliff that I'm just a second away from, uh, from stepping onto it. Uh, and you can see that he goes to stun me because I spawned spiders, but I ran the spiders behind him and uh, you can check out the spider micro video to kind of figure out how I did that. With, with, with the settings that I have, it's very, very easy to micro the spiders. And uh, you, should, you should micro your spiders and your hero very, very separately uh, because you're, you, you benefit from this massively if they have AoE stuns uh, in the laning phase because uh, either they have a choice between stunning you and taking off clarities and doing damage to you and potentially killing you or stunning your spiders, but they want to get both. So if you micro them separately nowadays in the laning phase, since you don't lose that free pathing if they stun your spiders, they usually won't even kill your spiders. So they have to, they, they basically have to choose between you or your spiders and nobody's going to, nobody's going to go for that. If they do, it's a waste of their time now. So try to micro your, uh, your unit separately unless you, unless you know, there's no point, unless you think that they're not going to use their, their AOE spells on you. So you can see that naturally people push in the lane against Broodmother just because it's so hard to deal with that hero. And um, basically what you want to do is abuse that fact until you get to uh, your soul ring. The very next thing that you can do to kind of start building up a spider army, especially if you're dealing with an AoE hero, is you can just go to this hard camp and start farming that. So that's going to give you a lot of farm um, aside from, you know, you're not going to have to actually go into the lane. So you're going to be outside of the lane. And then the creep wave is usually going to push into your base because usually that's what people do when you're dealing with a broodmother. Uh, so you're going to get waves of creeps as well as farming that side camp. And even if you even if you don't, you'll probably miss one or two creeps while you kill that side camp. The only reason I took so long to kill it in this replay was because it was stacked. But a lot of the time, you can just kill that uh, kill that side camp. You're going to miss one or two creeps, and then you're going to go into the into the lane, and then you're also going to get creeps. Um, you're going to get creeps in the lane as well. So you're actually going to get way, way more XP than they are in the lane. And you can see here that I built up a spider army. That's also a very, very important thing is when you have those lower levels uh, in, in spiders, as this guy is like going absolutely ham on his supports. For, for buying sentries. But when you have the lower levels in spiders, it's a lot harder to build up that army because if people just right click them as soon as uh, um, as soon as they spawn, they can actually very easily deal with the spiders by just keeping them down. It's like, it's what is that saying? An ounce of prevention is worth, is worth a, a pound of cure. Uh, it's basically like that. So you can avoid that. You can basically make them have to cure the spiders as opposed to prevent them by spawning them on jungle camps. And what I would ideally like to do in this game is to cut the creep wave uh, but to build up until that point, until I'm you know strong enough to absolutely cut the creep wave against these heroes, I'm basically deciding, okay, instead of cutting the creep wave and, and getting you know total free from the creeps, I feel like I can pressure more by being in the lane right now, and that it's a little bit dangerous to cut that creep wave. So there's two reasons to stay in the lane uh, and not cut the creep wave. A, if you feel like you can pressure more by by just being in the lane and screwing with uh, screwing with the carry, then and, and the supports, then you should be in the lane. Or B, if it's dangerous to be behind the tower, then you don't want to be there. But in this game, I found that it was probably a little bit dangerous against Pudge Shakiro with the Sven. But obviously, you know, things things change very quickly. And as Sven levels up his cleave, there's less ability to contest him in the lane. So you can see that I'm kind of moving my webs to be behind the tower. And instead of taking that hard camp, I'm going to focus on taking that easy camp and cutting the creep wave behind the tower. And then putting my remaining spiders on the, on the tower to do damage to it while Sven is... Um, dealing with the creep wave. So you can see that what I did is I put my hero in the lane and I put my hero in the lane so that way I wasn't losing XP for the creeps that were, di that were dying in the lane. But I put my spiders behind the tower so that the next wave wouldn't, wouldn't come up and meet with my wave. So that way I can go behind the tower and cut the creeps as soon as I feel like it's, it's time to do that. And when I would do that is basically when um, basically when the whole creep wave dies. So that way I'm not losing any XP and I'm also gaining, uh, I'm, I'm gaining that capability of cutting the creep wave behind the tower. And the way that I know when these creeps are coming isn't based off of a timing or anything like that. I know a lot of people do things based off of timing, but the way that I know when the creep wave is coming behind the tower, when I know to go cut it, uh, is, is because I look at my creep wave on the opposite side of the map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look, I'm going to look down here and you can see that if, if your creep wave is by your tier two, then their creep wave is by their tier two. 
and that's why I know when to cut the creep wave. And you want to make sure that you're not giving you're not giving the Sven any creeps to work with because if you give him any creeps to work with, he'll cut the creep wave and then he'll go hit your tower. And if it's like a timber saw or something like that, and it's not a Sven, he'll actually take your tower. So you want to cut every single creep and make sure that they cannot they cannot deal with it. And one thing that's very, very important is that if the enemy team has a hero who's very good at contesting you when you cut the creep wave, like a Legion Commander or a Timber Saw, then cut the creep wave even farther back. Cut the creep wave farther back than where you see I'm doing it in this game, because then they have to choose between either allowing their tower to die to your, uh, to your, uh, your creep wave and they're going to lose all of that xp and they're going to do it by just following around and wasting time on spiders like sven is doing right now you can see he's wasting time on spiders and he only stunned me and then like three spiders he didn't even get a single spider there and watch what happens a second from now he's kind of he's screwing around with me and he's, he's trying to he's he's very annoyed by me right now he's trying to deal with me but then he realizes oh no <laughs> my tower is getting hit by this creep wave you know, I don't want to lose this XP. Okay, and he's, you know, he's he's so mad that he's just flaming me right now, even though I haven't lost a single spider to him. Um, but beca because of what I'm doing, because of what I'm doing right now, he has to make a choice between either losing his tower or losing, um, losing farm to me, losing this creep wave, losing, um, lol. I'm lolling out loud. Oh my god, there's a lot of there's a lot of shit talk going on in this game. Anyway, like I said, so he has to he basically. He has to choose between losing his tower and getting the same farm as me, or not losing his tower and getting way, way worse farm than me. And since he contested me, I realized, okay, this guy is kind of, he's going to contest me. I'm going to make it a lot worse, a lot worse for him to, to contest this. And this is one thing that you can do um, on Broodmother as well, is number one, you can do this thing where you're cutting the creep wave very, very far back with spiders. So if he wants to contest this, he's going to lose his tower. Guaranteed, he's going to lose his tower. So he realizes at this point, it's not even worth it. And then I micro my I micro my hero so that I'm also killing this camp. So Brood is a hero that you should be doing multiple things on at once. Um, and I think Blitz said this to, uh, to, to, to me when I was playing on Team Leviathan. He said something along the lines of, the reason Kuro thinks that Broodmother's an OP hero is because you can farm so many places at once really, really quickly. And that's something that should absolutely be abused. I think that you can, in the laning phase, use the spiders to farm multiple camps, get bounty runes, cut creep waves, make sure that you're, you're, you're taking as much as you absolutely can. If they, if they give you an inch, take a mile. And uh, I could very easily get this tower, but instead what I'm deciding to do is I'm deciding to, to get as much farm as I can because I know the tower is basically free to get eventually. But now that, now that I have, a, I have a, a roamer coming here, I can go on the Sven right now. And I believe he barely, barely makes it out. He gets stunned in Fountain, but you can see how quickly his tower dies. And one thing that you should actually do in the laning phase, and something that can be absolutely abused, is when this creep wave uh, has a siege creep, so at the 10 minute mark and the five minute mark, a, a siege creep will spawn. What you can do is force your spiders to tank the tower for the for the siege creep. And you can actually get a tier two and even force a tier three by keep, because your spiders can, can almost indefinitely tank the tower. Uh, and you see, you can see that because I've been farming so effectively at 11 minutes, I have a desolator. 11 minutes, I have a deso soul ring. Let's look at the net worth just because of how I've been playing this. So I'm the, I'm the highest net worth as an offlaner who was against three heroes who I was just sitting in the offlane, crying myself to sleep in the corner for, for a long time. But just because all you need to do is get to that point where you can cut the creep wave, get to that point where you can really, really snowball your farm by taking all of the bounty runs, taking all of the camps, cutting the creep wave, diving the carry when, when, when you've done all of that stuff. You can actually become the highest net worth just by 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 doing this, even though the the early laning phase is really really difficult. Uh, so anyway, you can see that I have like cr a crazy amount of farm right now. Uh, you you basically in the laning phase you want to abuse and get as much farm as you can because the pressure is on the enemy team to stop you from farming, not for you to stop them from farming. That's one thing that I've learned about Broodmother that's really really important is that. Broodmother is a hero, so you can see here I was actually, because we had people roaming to top, I, I was kind of baiting him to, to go on me here and to commit to me. Uh, so that way I could just blow him up with my ulti. Pudge comes over, we have the duel come in because the blink duel was coming out, and then we, we kill him. But anyway, as I was saying, the pressure is on them to do something about you, not for you to do something about them, because Brood farms faster than almost any hero in Dota. So what I'm basically saying is pressure the carry if you can, but don't feel pressured to pressure the carry, because the pressure is on them to, to deal with you because you are against three people and you will make a lot of space. You will take their towers. You will win the late game because you farm so much faster than any hero in the game. And you can take the tier two very, very easily if you just get a huge lead before you actually go for kills, before you actually go for towers. Make sure to abuse the fact that you can get so many you can get so much farm and farm so many things at once very, very safely on this hero. That's what you need to do in the laning phase, in my opinion. 
And to get to that point, you need to do a lot of hiding in the trees, a lot of juking around in, in areas where they can't walk. And, and that's okay because you'll, you'll have you know a rough couple of first levels, but then this here really, really snowballs and that's just what you need to get to. Okay, so that's it for this video. I genuinely believe this hero is very, very broken. This is one of my favorite heroes and this is a hero that I've gotten to 7K MMR with a couple of times. So I genuinely think that this hero is very, very good and I think she's even better in this patch and even in the laning phase where people think that she might be weaker because of the, because of the invis problems. But you can see how I played it and it was against hard counter heroes. Hard, hard counter heroes in the previous patch and I did not care. I am still a tremendous problem, the biggest problem for the enemy team right now just because this hero is so good now. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. I do genuinely appreciate it, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.